Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl Stephanie Hardy. So this episode is going to be a little bit different. So this week, I've been preparing for my debut as a first-time commentator for the Belladonna Division inaugural event, Genesis, which is taking place at the Gadsden Mall here in Gadsden, Alabama. And... I have also been having great conversations with women who are going to be in the show over the past couple of weeks. Um, I did talk to owner Casey, um, Casey Dillon. And then after I spoke with her, I also talked with Brittany Blake, who is the Women's Superstars United um, Women's Champion. And I talked to The Woad. And this week, I got to have two amazing conversations with Central Empire Wrestling Women's Champion Valentina Loca out of New Mexico. And I had a great conversation with um, with owner of the Belladonna Division and Alabama Pro Wrestling Hall of Famer Veronica Fairchild and they're both going to talk about how they got started wrestling you know what their motivations are and what they're looking forward to with this event coming up on Saturday also if you haven't gotten your tickets please get your tickets the link to buy your tickets is also on my Instagram so please go on there and buy those tickets general admission $15 um, ringside seats $20 please go and support women's wrestling so I hope you enjoy this episode of the hardy wrestling podcast hello hello valentina how are you i'm doing great how are you oh doing just fine i'm a little sweaty i'm actually recording right now outside of the the black and brave wrestling academy so i apologize if there's any traffic but we are all good to go. I'm all yours. Okay, so you just got out of training. Yeah, yeah, we've been training all day. So that's why I, when I had asked if it was going to be video or audio, I was like, okay, let me make sure that I look like a person. But this works out just fine. <laughs> right. Um, I've been trying to sort of transition in and out of the whole audio thing, but it's okay. Um, so Valentina Loca, I'm so happy that you're on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. So I'm going to start and ask you the question that I ask all of my guests, and that's when did you fall in love with wrestling? Okay, awesome. Well, uh, I guess I'll, I'll also give like the super cliche. I started watching wrestling when I was a child. So um, I grew up around the era of like 2004, 2005 wrestling. That's usually when I, uh, I was about nine years old, and that's when I had gotten into it. So big on like the, the SmackDown era. Uh, a little bit of Monday Night Raw, and that's around the time when I was like, this is awesome. I want to do this. <laughs> okay, um, so when did you know you wanted to pursue it as a career? Honestly, it was actually pretty late in life that I had decided to actually pursue it because uh, if for those listeners out there that don't know, I'm only about 4'10", uh, 100 pounds, maybe on a good day. <laughs> so uh, the odds were pretty much stacked against me from the get-go, and it wasn't really like the first thought to be like, I'm going to go try body slamming people with all of my tiny body. <laughs> but uh, I got into a little bit of athletics beforehand. I had done some MMA and things of that nature. So my coach during that time had really confidence in me. He's like, no, you're actually pretty athletic. You can go ahead and try giving something a shot here. And so I decided to pack up and move from New Mexico all the way over here to Iowa, where I'm still living, uh, where I'm training at the uh, Black and Brave Wrestling Academy. Okay, now, earlier you did mention how you had started sort of watching wrestling when you were a child around the two th like the 2000s. So who were some of your favorites around from around that time? Oh, absolutely. My, my two favorites, above all else, were uh, Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio. They were probably my biggest inspirations, not only just as a wrestler, but as a person. Uh, they were really awesome to see on the television not only just because they were like super talented and probably arguably the greatest of all time but because they were also super awesome at representation because as a fellow hispanic when you see people that look like you doing really awesome things you're like that's kind of cool i think i can do that too so uh just above all else those two are, will always be high on my list yeah those are two really good ones because it seemed like those two really ruled smackdown around that time because smackdown seemed like the show yeah, um, around absolutely. that time 
So it's just kind of like when you think of like when I think of SmackDown outside of thinking of The Rock, I think of those two, you know, specifically. And it's just everything they were both able to accomplish, you know, even in WCW, even into WWE were always, you know, great things. And I enjoyed them, you know, as performers and everything. And at times I do find myself wondering what would Eddie Guerrero be doing now around this time if he were still here with us. So Mm -hmm. it's just those two are some of my favorites and I love to see them fight each other. Like them fighting each other is just like, you know, you're in for, you know, a feast for the eyes in terms of athleticism. So I understand that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you can imagine maybe as a, as a 10 year old child, me like loving these two guys so much and then, the moment when uh, Eddie had turned on Ray and gave him that suplex on the stairs and there was blood everywhere, I was just like heartbroken as a 10 year old. That was like the worst thing to happen in my entire world at that time. And I'm just thinking like, man, what a time that was just to be alive in that time of, like you were mentioning in SmackDown and just the general time of being for sure. Yeah, it was just absolutely insane. I feel lucky to have even, you know, you don't think about it, but to even when you think back on it, if you, feel really lucky to have experienced any of that at all so um how did you pursue training once you decided to go all in on wrestling uh well uh like i had mentioned i decided kind of on a spur moment i was like i'm gonna pack up everything and go to where i know nobody uh, in the middle of the country Um, i had never really lived outside of new mexico for my entire life so when i decided to move to iowa to train here at the black and brave wrestling academy It was a little bit of a daunting experience because um, even though I did do a little bit of MMA beforehand, it wasn't anything in comparison to what I would be learning here. So uh, I wasn't the most athletic person, I'll say that. But I think (laughs) above all else, like an intangible, because like I said, I'm not the biggest and I'm certainly not the strongest. But the thing that I can really toot my home about is uh, my work ethic. I work extremely hard. I don't give up. And that's something I'm looking forward to bringing into my match here this weekend in Gadsden for the Belladonna Division's first show. Right. I'm actually looking forward to seeing, you know, all of your abilities, you know, in your match at the Belladonna Division show Genesis. Like, I'm so excited um, to be witnessing that and to be a part of it as well, Um, because I'll I'll actually be making my debut as a commentator. So I'll be, you know, calling your action but I feel like that's going to be really cool to see and so you mentioned that you train at the Black and Brave um, Wrestling Academy that's where Seth Rollins is a trainer right? Yep him and Merrick Brave are are both my lead trainers here at the school and they've been incredibly instrumental to just my success and everything that I do in wrestling is because of them because they you know were cool enough to invite and accept a girl from small town New Mexico to come try and pursue her dreams so I really can't say good enough things about them like they're just awesome and everything that I've done for my training just even how I present myself in the world of wrestling is all because of them so I definitely hold them in really high regard yeah I was just talking to Brittany Blake um and shout out to her um I was just talking to her um last week in terms of her training and she gets trained from she got trained from Drew Gulak And it's just, I was telling her how amazing I find it that these people who you wouldn't necessarily think from the outside looking in, you know, who are just superstars, you know, actually make time to actually help train the future. And I was just telling her how cool I think that is, you know, that they're actually reaching back, you know, reaching back to actually pull up the future, you know, when they don't necessarily have to, you know, because they could be really busy. But they've got all this other stuff going on. But then they actually come back and, and actually help train. I think that's amazing. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Even now, like, because um, I'm sure as we all know, uh, Beth and his fiance Becky, uh, they had their first child. But even still, like, uh, being a dad, as much as all that, like, entails just alone, I imagine that's a pretty heavy job with the schedule that he has. He still manages time to still be here with us, which I think is absolutely amazing. And it really goes to show the kind of person that he is that you know he cares enough to want to see us do well as well as you know doing the things that are going on in his life as well right like that's just cool (laughs) it's just amazing um so I want to ask you you know you did mention how you are um and I have seen in some of your Instagram posts and everything that you did mention that you were about that you're about four foot ten is that yeah so how did that you know sort of like how were you necessarily able to sort of live you know through that and then how were you able to sort of you know help that adapt to your wrestling ability and your wrestling style 
sure uh honestly it was pretty tough because uh, like i mentioned i'm especially starting out i was not the most athletic person so i learned pretty quickly that i would need to really adapt to my size and use that as my advantage rather than using it as a hindrance because you know when you first start you want to lift all the people and do all the cool moves that you've seen on tv and then you realize well i'm going to make do with what i got and i think instead of using that as something to get down on myself upon i kind of turned that on its head and decided hey i'm going to use this to really make myself unique so everything that i do and everything that i was taught wasn't necessarily conventional but it was something that i tried to use to my advantage so when uh you are there to call the action here in gadsden this weekend at the belladonna division uh you and everybody else in attendance will get to see me duck dodge bob and weave and hopefully <laughs> uh, wrestle some circles around harley fairfax right like i admire your per- your the, the way you were able to you know persevere through that and still be able to adapt because a lot of people you know probably would have felt discouraged in the idea that they may not, you know, be as big, you know, as everyone else or as fast as everyone else, but it te- but it seems as if you took that and basically, you know, used that to your advantage, which is always, you know, great to have alongside, you know, passion. And I'm just really, you know, I find that very admirable that you were able to do that, and I am really excited to see more of um what you have to offer there. So you also mentioned um, when you were talking about Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero, you were talking about representation um, in terms of being a Hispanic woman, you know, from New Mexico. Um, How important is it, you know, to be a great example of Hispanic wrestling talent, you know, in wrestling now, whether it be an independent or in mainstream? Honestly, above all else, I think that was the thing that I placed most priority on when I started wrestling. Um, honestly, like it's all cool and fine and well and dandy to like go out and want to, you know, make a lot of money or be really famous. But honestly, I just wanted to make fellow people that looked like me feel the same way that Eddie and Ray had made me feel because I recognized and I realized how important that was to me. And so when I started in wrestling, that was my main goal, just to really continue on that representation because uh thankfully like I've gotten to see so many cool role models like Eddie and Ray but also like female role models like AJ Lee and Bailey and other Hispanic women as well so just being able to continue that I guess legacy in terms of representation for the Hispanic community while we wait for this man this gentleman to pass by (laughs) casually um but yeah like I was saying I think Above all else, that's the thing I wanted to accomplish more than anything in wrestling because I hold that in such high regard. So, if anything, even if, you know, I leave one mark on wrestling, it's that I was able to make somebody of, you know, similar descent be like, yeah, that's awesome, that she was able to follow her journey so then I can follow my journey, whatever they might be. Okay. Do you feel that wrestling now is in a good place in terms of um, how in terms of how Hispanic wrestlers, male or female, are being portrayed? Honestly, you know, there's always work to be done, but I'm definitely happy with all the people that, like, we're seeing on TV. So many different luchadors on WWE, from Lucha House Party to, uh, you know, Humberto Carrillo, Angel Garza, just so many people that I can name off the top of my head. And just the fact that I can, like, name off that many people that are such an invisible light currently in this day and age, like, is awesome. And even, like, with the ladies, like, on AEW, like, uh, Diamante, she's awesome. And all the other ladies that are coming down from Texas that are on AEW Dark. You know, I see you. I notice you. And I guess especially more, being from New Mexico also instilled me with, like, a sense of pride. Because when you hear about New Mexico, you really don't know very many wrestlers that come from New Mexico, at least that are on such a visible scale. So I kind of adopted that responsibility as well. Kind of put that extra thing on my back to be like, all right, I'm here. I want to be, you know, accurate and representation of my people but I also want to be like hey New Mexico is here too and New Mexico is awesome thankfully it looks like there's more people coming out of New Mexico thanks to a training school that's uh ran by a guy named Gino Rivera he started up a school in Albuquerque not too long ago so he's been training people and more people are coming out which I think is super awesome but when you see me in person you'll definitely know oh she's from New Mexico Yeah, because I did see on your Instagram where you did have gear that's sort of centered on the New Mexican flag. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 
I thought that was really cool. And I was just like, oh, that is so pretty. And I just love the coloring and everything. So I was just like, yup, I like that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a definitely a little running gag with my friends because whenever I come out with the gear and I also come out with like a physical New Mexico flag too. So I'm like, hey guys, in case you didn't know, I'm from New Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of like what Thunder Rosa does to an extent, because she has, when she comes out at AEW or for anything else, you know, she'll come out dressed in an outfit that's like half American flag or half, you know, the Mexican flag. Mm -hmm. And then she'll come out with a Mexican flag, too. And that's just like, yes. (laughs) 100%. She's great. And I've I've had the awesome opportunity to work with Thunder Rosa, and she's pretty awesome as well. So, yeah, if I can, you know, help aid in those representation efforts like I'm all for it that's 100% something that I'm on board for well that's beautiful to hear um so how has the culture of independent wrestling you know treated you since you started wrestling oh boy I guess the way that I would explain it without getting like two therapists couch on you (laughs) uh I've gotten to do like a really amazing amount of things like things that 10 year old me would never have imagined that I've gotten to do in my life and while I've gone to do some like really amazing things I've also fallen on my face quite a lot so I think those experiences are just as important as like the successes because if anything it makes you appreciate the successes that much more to know what it's like to you know fall on your face but get back up and keep going at it like uh, I've gotten a really awesome opportunity to go to Canada a few times that was something I never thought I'd do Um, I've gotten a chance to be an extra on WWE TV. That was something I never thought I would do. Like me on TV, somebody from like a town of 200 people. And just being able to do that, whatever capacity I was able to do is just something super mind blowing, but also something that I'm super grateful for. I take every experience as it is and I'm just grateful for all of it because uh, when you look at me on paper, like none of this was supposed to happen to me. Like small town girl, tiny actually. (laughs) So I think just being able to do all the things that I've done and even with more on the horizon I'm just super excited and super grateful for all of it that's pretty good and I thought it was funny how you mentioned therapist couch answer like I mean this is a safe space so whatever you said you know was going to be you know okay but I thought it was funny that you mentioned that you were at WWE extra like when was this and when is this when did this happen because I may have seen you and probably just didn't know Okay, uh, well, it wasn't anything like too too noteworthy. I was just a part of uh, No Way Jose's conga line that during that time that was happening. Uh, I got a chance to be in his conga line a few times. And so that was a good time, like just getting out and going out to party and <laughs> having a good time. Like those are experiences I'll treasure for a lifetime. Oh, that's cool. Because one of my um, previous guests, um, his name is Prince Adonis. Um, he wrestles out in Tennessee. He was an extra um, for for Monday Night Raw at one point, and I think it involved it involved Brock Lesnar attacking Seth Rollins, and he was an ENT. Oh, and, that's awesome! Yeah, and he basically had to pick him up, you know, on a stretcher and put him on the, you know, the ambulance and everything. And just to hear that story of how that turned out is just amazing. So anytime I can ask any questions about, you know, being an extra like that, that has to be pretty exciting you know it was exciting to hear his story and it's exciting to hear your story too because I really did love No Way Jose he was cool oh he's very cool very nice guy too like he's awesome he was super welcoming every time like he always stressed to have fun he was like no matter what happens out there just go out and have fun because we only live once so you know let's go out and do it and so he was always super positive and super welcoming and just the environment in general is super awesome just being able to do that was great yes so Um, How has the pandemic affected you this year in terms of your training or in terms of your wrestling career? And how have you been able to sort of pivot through that? Oh, man. I think I would be amiss if I I said it didn't, you know, kind of hamper my my efforts a little bit as it did. I'm sure with mostly everybody that's going on in the world right now. Um, When the pandemic had first started, I um, actually was back home in New Mexico, unfortunately, for a funeral. But because of all the stuff that was going on, uh, New Mexico locked itself down completely, like airports, borders and everything. So I actually couldn't leave New Mexico for about three months after uh, the pandemic had started. So I really didn't have any access to like a ring or anything like that. I was kind of a sitting duck, not sure when they were gonna let me leave the state. So I always tell that story as um, the time that New Mexico held me hostage. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But thankfully, 
uh, when I was able to come back to Iowa, uh, the school was open for the most part, of course, with like masks, temperature checks, um, getting COVID tests when you were out of town. So we were like all very proactive here at the school. And what's nice about our community here is that um, everybody that trains here at the school is pretty much people that live here in town in Davenport. So uh, we were able to still really keep like our tight knit family and still be able to train in, even if it was a limited capacity, like just those are like the very small things that I was grateful for because I know that not everyone got to have that. So just being able to have that outlet, even though we weren't able to like run shows or go to shows, just having access to a ring in general was something that I was greatly appreciative of for sure. Well, that sounds like it was a whirlwind of everything that you were having to deal with in terms of um, loss and then having to sort of, you know, pivot around the pandemic in the sense that you weren't allowed to go anywhere. I bet I bet that was pretty hard. Um, but aside from that, you know, it's good that everything has sort of it's like everyone's sort of finding a way to sort of get back to normal ish. So, you know, here's hoping that everything can kind of just turn around a little bit more um, and hopefully everything will be okay at some point. Um, So you did mention in the interview that you um, had traveled um, a little bit in terms of your wrestling career. Where has been your favorite place to wrestle? Oh, man. Outside of the U.S. All right. Well, when I got to go to Canada, I got to do some uh, extra work for Impact. And the venue that they had used when they were in Toronto was probably like my favorite venue I've ever been to. It was like a nightclub. And the way that they set it up with the lighting was just super awesome. Um, I didn't get to have a match per se, but I got to uh, do some things in like the extra nature where I got to like catch people on dives or, you know, get biffed off by someone off the stage. So like even those opportunities to be on live pay-per-view just in that limited capacity was something still super awesome. Because at the end of the day, I'm just a huge nerd for wrestling. So it's a very much like, I'm very happy to be here kind of mentality. Cause I feel like that's what makes things the most fun because it can be really easy like in the mess of things when you're trying to go here, there and everywhere to really get lost and not stop to smell the roses. So that's something I definitely try to do to keep myself grounded. Like whether it be a big opportunity or a small opportunity, just having that chance to, to do what I do is something that I'll always consider to be a favorite of mine. Yes, I find that if you do that, you know, you just don't lose the love for what it is that you do. Because I feel like sometimes in life, you know, we have a tendency to get in routine and then we get so used to a thing that we love so much that eventually we sort of become, I don't, I guess, apathetic to it. And we get kind of, you know, I don't want to say bored with it or whatever, but I find that once you celebrate, once you take time to celebrate like the small wins, then, you know, it, it helps you to become more appreciative of where you are um, in comparison to where you've been and where you're going to go. So I think that's a good philosophy to have. So who has been your favorite opponent to wrestle and do you have any dream opponents? Oh, that's a good one because I've wrestled lots of people and I feel like I've taken something from everybody that I've wrestled that I've really enjoyed. So let me give a second to think about it because... For their own separate reasons, I love wrestling certain people. Uh, I will say off the top of my head, just as a note, uh, a match that I had with uh, Max the Impaler, who's, uh, she used to be out of, uh, they used to be out of Ohio, and I think now they're living in the Pennsylvania area. Uh, a match that I did with them at a company called Rise, I want to say a few years ago, was probably one of my favorite matches, just because I also love telling stories. So the story of like, David versus Goliath, little person versus big person will always have my heart. And so I think uh, if we ever see that match on YouTube or wherever it may come out, I think we told a really awesome story and I think that the audience was really invested in it. So they're definitely um, a favorite opponent of mine. And I always tell them, I'm like, I'm down to wrestle you again, please. Eat me to Indonesia. I I want that. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, they're definitely a favorite opponent of mine. Uh, But also... I will shout out um, Heather Reckless just because I like to consider her like my fight forever partner. She's also somebody who was trained here at the Black and Brave Wrestling Academy. And I feel like I've wrestled her here in Iowa, Indiana, Kentucky. I've wrestled her everywhere. But I feel like we have just that chemistry where we can kind of tell what each other's thinking and we can come up with some really cool magic whenever we're in a ring together. So I always appreciate whenever I get a chance to square up with her. Uh, And then dream opponents per se... 
Because see, the thing for me is I want to wrestle everybody. Like I want to go everywhere and do everything. So like whittling it down to like a person or a few people, it's like, ah, man. Well, even if you can't name, you know, all of them, just name just one. Okay. For sure. For sure. I think I would like to wrestle either uh, Sasha Banks. She's a good one because uh, mm. since her inspiration, yeah, was also Eddie Guerrero. And I feel like our styles are similar. And especially like in our characters too, like she has a lot of attitude and I have a lot of attitude. So seeing those two people butt heads, I think that would be interesting. But also, man, I also think that potentially wrestling someone like uh, like a Jordan Grace would be fun because you know that power again yes. like my speed I think that would be fun as well so I'm down for a challenge like big or small like I just want to test my metal against everyone and see what we can do yeah Sasha Banks is actually my favorite female wrestler of all time I fe- I've, I've said multiple times I feel like she's the greatest um so I feel like that would be a really good you know match for you to have and even Jordan Grace that would be really cool too and speaking of Jordan Grace, who was um, Jazz's partner, who's actually going to be on the Belladonna show, um, <laughs> I had to do that little segue there. Oh, weird. absolutely. I'm glad you did. I was hoping you would. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad you were rooting for me in that. Um, it's just, you're going to be facing Harley Fairfax. So how have you been, you know, preparing, you know, for that match that's taking place Saturday? Ooh, well, I've done my research a little bit. I've seen what Mrs. Fairfax has got going on. And I'm not going to lie. She's got a, a look to her. And I can appreciate that because throughout my career, I've been thrown at different challenges to either sink or swim, to survive or die. So I'm not going to really consider her to be anything different. Honestly, it's going to be business as usual for me, you know, to find the odds, trying to make things happen because, well... I may get, you know, thrown to Indonesia or thrown into the third row. I think something that Miss Harley might not be prepared for is that the fact that I just don't give up. So she can, you know, pan me into the mat, slam me one, two, three times. But I don't know if she's going to have a game plan for what happens when I keep getting back up and keep getting in her face. And in fact, I'll just be like, what's up? What's good? Let's, you know, what else you got? Very much like uh, Steve Rogers, where he... Is in the if you've seen this uh, Captain America movie where he's in the alleyway, you know, getting the snot kicked out of him, and yeah, he tells, he tells the dude, he's like, "Is that all you got?" Yeah, and I can do this all day. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So that's the same kind of vibes that I'm trying to send out to Miss Harley Fairfax there, and I think we're gonna come up with something special. Hopefully, you know, there's a lot of talented ladies here on the show, and. I just want to make my mark because last time I was in Gadsden, uh, they welcomed me with open arms. I'd never been there before. They had never seen me before. So the fact that they were so receptive and they were really on board with what I was trying to do, uh, I hope we can make the same thing happen again because I love being there and I'm happy to be welcomed back. That sounds really great. And I'm happy to have you in my home state. So this is going to be an amazing time, you know, with all of these women and with you and all of the above. But how excited are you to even be on the same card as Jazz, who's like on her retirement tour and basically just looking to continue to make her mark this year? It's awesome. Like, it's super mind blowing. As soon as I was told this was going to happen, I was like, ah, oh, because I'm somebody who's like a sponge. I love going up to people respectfully of course but <laughs> and yes. asking and you know picking their brains and getting their opinions on things because I'm someone who you know just wants to be the best at what I do and how can I do that when I have somebody who's literally a living legend standing in front of me has all this wealth of knowledge who has worked in all the places that I hope to work one day so I think the excitement can't be understated and the fact that I'm gonna have a chance to you know learn from her and get some things going this weekend is something that I'm looking forward to because I'm always up for doing seminars whether it be in Gadsden Alabama or you know 10 minutes away from my house you have one I'll be there that's great and I'm really pumped for it as well like I feel like it's just going to be the most amazing thing to happen um and I'm just really excited to be getting into the independent you know wrestling atmosphere in terms of Alabama and this this will be my first independent independent show period because 
I've I've only ever been to WWE shows ever. So <laughs> like this will be my first time ever, you know, being a part of an independent wrestling show and then being to one period. So this is going to be an experience and I'm just really excited, you know, for all of you girls and just, you know, and excited for myself and just for what it means for women's wrestling as a whole. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Yes, I'm so excited for you. I didn't know this was your first independent show ever. So you're in for a treat. There's nothing like it. I love it. Yeah, like it seems like it's going to be really great. So I'm, I'm pumped. Um, so how do you feel about the state of women's wrestling in terms of the independence and um, the mainstream? Um, yeah, how do you feel about women's wrestling now? At the, about the state of it? Man... I feel like this is like a a recurring theme with a lot of things I've said today, so I apologize if I sound like a broken record, but just seeing the leaps and bounds in terms of where women's wrestling used to be and where it is now, like it's just absolutely something that's incredible to me to see that women are getting such a prominent stage to feature their talents on and to show, you know, we're more than just the novelty act or we're more than just, you know, eye candy to look at. You know, we're athletes. We have a lot to offer. We have a lot of entertainment value and, you know, we can make just as much money as not more than the guys. Like, I think it's something that I'm super happy to be a part of. And I tell people to anybody who will listen, like now above all else, I think is a really great time to be a women's wrestler. Like, of course there are still hurdles to overcome and, and things to really work on, but above all else, just seeing how far we've come with the ladies that have paved the way and the things that we've gotten able to do and like even now just having this all women's show in Alabama I think that's something to really be commended for so you know shout out to the Belladonna division for making this happen I'm super excited and you know I'm glad that you're excited too because it's going to be a great night that's a really good answer and even though of course there's still always so much you know so much more than can, that can be done it's like you can't really lie and pretend that that, that nothing has happened Like there's so much history that has taken place with women's wrestling, even in more recent years. And I feel like it can only get, you know, better from here. And there's still so much work to be done, even sometimes behind the scenes, but, but still at the very least, you know, ceilings are being broken, you know, records are being broken. Everything, you know, is going to continue to go up, you know, in my opinion. So, and when it's up, it's stuck. Like Cardi B says. Um, (laughs) So, um, I got one last question for you. Um, what does the future hold for Valentina Loca? Ooh, I love that. This question is deep. <laughs> Honestly, I just want to be happy with what I'm doing. I think that's the reason why I got into wrestling in the first place is just to be happy and to make others happy. So I think wherever that carries me, whether it be to Gadsden, Alabama, back up to Canada, or even here in my backyard in Davenport, Iowa, I think above all else I just want to be happy with what I'm doing who I'm working with what I'm doing what stories I'm telling and you know if I get to do more cool things with that awesome if I get to be on your television set that's great I will definitely not say no but at the end of the day if I can just be happy with what I'm and the vibe and the message that I'm putting out you know that's all that matters to me okay that's a really good answer and also as a bonus note um BB Ryan is also on the um card and she also trains at Black and Brave. You know, have you two ever fought each other or crossed paths with each other? Oh yeah, I know BB Ryan very well. So the crowd at the Belladonna Division is in for a treat. Uh, fun fact, I don't know if it's been released yet to YouTube, but the last time that me and BB Ryan crossed paths, um, I was on the receiving end of a double Samoan drop, if you can believe it. BB Ryan got not only me, but another young lady on her shoulders and gave us both a Simone drop at the same time. So that's the kind of power, that's the kind of explosiveness that the people in Gadsden are going to be able to see witness to because while BB Ryan might not have the most experience out of everyone, she definitely has the drive and that raw power to really match with anybody. So I'm excited to see what she does as well. Okay, you know, that's that sounds really great. And a double Simone drop just sounds like wow like, oh yeah it was I don't, even, I don't know if i've ever even seen that in my entire life so i mean oh my god that makes me even more excited to see what the both of you have to offer seeing as you both come from this you know great academy and you both learned together and fought together and everything so i'm really excited well i just want to thank you valentina for coming on the hardy wrestling podcast and 
if you can, you know, just tell everyone, you know, all the listeners where to follow you and, you know, find you on social media and stuff. Absolutely. And thank you for having me on. It's been really awesome. You know, I can talk all day. So having, you know, the chance to be here and talk about how awesome wrestling is, is something that, you know, I'll never say no to. Uh, but for right now, you guys can see me ramble more. I am on the same handle on all social media networks, so you can find me pretty easily. I'm at S West, like the direction, Spitfire on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, question mark. But you know, if you search Valentina Loco, you'll find me. I'm the one who's making the ugly faces, so I'm not hard to find. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show, Valentina. And I look forward to seeing you this weekend, okay? Yes, ma'am. I'll see you there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Veronica. Hello. Hey. Is this working? Yes, it's working. I can hear you. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. How are you doing? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, getting really excited about Belladonna. There's so much going on. It's just exciting. It really is. Um, and we're going to get into it um, a little bit later in our conversation. But I'm going to start the interview how I always start my interviews and ask you, um, when did you fall in love with wrestling? <laughs> oh, Stephanie, I was conceived in the backseat of a car at a indie wrestling <laughs> show. So uh, <laughs> I do not believe that I, I, there was, it was destiny. It just was meant to be. My dad was a wrestler. I mean, it was, I don't remember not ever having something to do with wrestling. Even when I was a teenager, when, you know, it's that kind of, it's cool still to you as a kid, but then you're like, uh, I, need, I don't need to watch this anymore because I'm too grown up for this. Yeah, it was that secret obsession where every time an event was taking place, I would so be there and not tell a soul about it. So I was always in love with wrestling. I mean, did I really have a choice? I mean, I was born into it technically, but conceived at a show too so <laughs> so that's so that really happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not making that <laughs> oh my goodness no. that is probably the best start to an interview i've had in, a, in, in <laughs> oh my god in so long like that's just the greatest <laughs> yeah you can't make stuff i mean you can make stuff up like that but whew, yeah it was destiny <laughs> okay so, um, was your mom a wrestler too? No, she just liked all of them. <laughs> okay, well. <sighs> so basically, since your father was a wrestler, um, and basically it was destiny for you to be in the business <laughs> um, yeah. when you mention it that way. So, I mean, that's an amazing story that, you know, that's how it started. Because initially, that's kind of how I got started, except my dad wasn't a wrestler. He was a wrestling fan. Um, yeah. So he kind of got me into it when I was four and I just started watching it like that. And then my grandmother, she watched it. And so it's kind of, it was kind of a family affair in terms of fandom, but nobody in my family has ever been in the business. So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I lost you there for a second. I right, said, I'm no, back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. I said, nobody's in my family's really been in the business per se, but we've just been fans for a long time. So yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So when did you per decide to pursue it as a career? Well, I had a lot of goals that I wanted to achieve. It, and it was probably the third career on my list to achieve. Um, I know this sounds hilarious, but Hooters Girl was like the number one. <laughs> oh, wow. I know that's hilarious. But... Um, I, I worked at Hooters while I was in school and then once I finished school I was a massage therapist and I went on tour with different type of bands and when touring was done I just happened 
happened to be home. I, I was living in Tampa, Florida at the time, and I was home shopping for um, wedding dresses. Mm-hmm. And there was a show that my parents were going to. It was a, a, I'm pretty sure it was Wrestle Birmingham. And it, this was probably 2007, summer of 2007. And my mom says, well, I've got you an extra ticket since you're going to be here this weekend because you're definitely going to want to go to this show. I said, why would I want to go to this show? Well, your favorite, well, one of your favorite wrestlers that you were in love with will be there and I said oh really which one (laughs) well it was Buff Bagwell oh man I wore his shirt everywhere (laughs) and I was excited and my fiance who's my husband now um he actually went with us and my sister was with us as well my sister is about uh six and a half seven years younger than me so she was really excited about seeing buff as much as I was. And then, you know, intermission comes and you get to get in the ring with buff and take a picture with him. And I said, I will be the first in line. Well, I wasn't, um, there were a lot of people that beat me to the, to the line to get in the ring. But my, me and my sister, when we got up to the ring, honestly, would never as adults stepped foot into a ring. And I told her, when we get up there, you get on one side, I'm going to get on the other, and we're going to Stacy Keebler this thing. And Oh, wow. By that, I mean we're going to go one foot over and do the sexy entrance and then go in. And, I, and she goes, you won't do it. I said, you, yeah, I will, but you got to do it with, it with me. And she's like, okay, but don't not do it because I'm so doing it. So we actually entered the ring that sexy Stacy Keebler entrance and Buff looks at us like what just happened <laughs> and we're just over the top excited we'd completely forgot how we got in the ring because we'd never been in the ring as well now, as kids when my dad had a ring we'd get in there but as adults we were that was the first time we'd ever done that ever and we nailed it and he just looks at us well are you are you guys in the business? <laughs> business. And wrestling he says, I said, we're in, and we're in the business of getting our picture made with you. Oh, well, we so got our little Polaroid pictures. I promise. And it was so much fun that next day, one of the guys that was actually on the show knew my dad called my dad and said hey buff bagwell wanted me to give your daughters a phone call i was like "Uh uh-oh what but it was because he wanted to know how interested we were in being in the business and i i said don't you think i'm a little too old for that now i mean at this time I was 24 Mm -hmm. and he my dad goes no you can do it whenever you want to do it would you want to do it I don't think you should do it my dad was completely against it and I was like well duh I just never thought it would happen because all the other stuff in life has happened he goes well they're wanting you to come and check out this school I said okay my sister was still she was still too young she was still in high school at the time so Mm -hmm. she was not able to join us just yet and by December um I'd moved back to Alabama and started training at the school that I went to and it just took off from there and it was I started training in December of 2007 and my first match was March 2008 oh wow yeah I mean I was like dang what I must have done something right well I guess showing up and doing the things that I was supposed to do every week week after week and I mean on week I want to say it was six weeks in I broke my arm Oh, wow. 
I did not stop going to training, cast and all. I was, it didn't matter. I was, I was in and I loved every second of every pain I was in. I was, I was all in. I was ready to go, but I was like, what? I'm already going to start wrestling? Whoa. Well, by 2009, I'd started doing some local traveling around the Southeast and I was asked to come to Tennessee and I worked with Burt Prentice and as soon as I got in with Burt Prentice, it was like, hey, I'm going to make, um, you're just going to travel with me and do whatever. And so I started doing Memphis wrestling with um, Jerry Lawler and Ooh. It, I mean, it just, it just took off from there. It was incredible. So it sounds like you kind of just had a fast track into the wrestling business outside of, you know, your dad um, being in it. And then with your evolution and how you met Buff Bagwell and then going to training, like, like <laughs> it seems like you took, you were like a duck taking the water. You just went straight through it and then finally, and then just didn't quit and then got put in the business. Like that's an yeah. amazing story. Yeah. It wasn't a, Hey, my dad got me in the business. Right. My dad, I mean, he still knew all these people and talked to them and still did show. I mean, he wasn't putting on his own shows, but he was still going to shows of uh, friends that he knew and never made a phone call say, hey, my daughter's wrestling. You should check this out kind of thing. It was a I I started with nothing. I didn't tell everybody that hey, my dad's this guy, because honestly, they would have known, they would have gone, who? I'm like, it's okay. He only worked with Continental and Mike Jackson forever. So it's not that he would, he made it big, but people knew who he was. I mean, he was respected, which is great. And I didn't want anything handed to me. I've never wanted it that way. So it was a, let's do this. I just put in the work and it happened. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of um, Carmella in the WWE and how she kind of got started. Um, her yeah, father, I, I, I like know her, a little bit of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Her father um, was a wrestler, and I and I remember seeing Carmella in NXT, and I had no clue who she was. And then when she said in an interview that her father was a wrestler, and then when they did a documentary on her, and you saw who he was, I was just like, oh, okay. You know, it's kind of like you know about him. He seemed like the type of person you knew about if you were in the business, but you know yes. to the to the outside you know regular fan like me you know because I wasn't born then of course um but at the same time <laughs> you know an outside fan you wouldn't necessarily know who he was you know outside of that so that's right. kind of, so that's kind of you know a parallel between you and her in that way so um what was some of the greatest lessons that you learned while you were training in wrestling mm. keep your mouth shut and listen Mm -hmm. um, there's so much of the opposite that happens in the business. Everybody wants to be somebody, obviously, but just because you've been in the business for a certain amount of time does not mean you know everything. Just because back in 1985, you wrestled this guy at this show. Okay, Uncle Rico, just stop talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, there's if you if you stop learning in this business you need to get out because you should never ever stop learning there's always going to be somebody bigger there's always going to be somebody better there's always going to be somebody that has higher flying moves or whatever you think is your niche there's always going to be somebody better so when you stop and listen it's only going to help you Right. And I think that could be applied to any, you know, any situation in life, even outside of wrestling. It's like, yeah, you, like sometimes it, you just have people who just talk a whole lot, you know, and then they just <laughs> pretend like they know everything. But in actuality, yeah, but in actuality, there's so much, you know, that you still don't know because the world is so big, you know. So yeah. it's just if you don't, you know, hush and listen, then, <laughs> then you, you might miss learn. out on some serious stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So I, I've, yeah, I've applied so much wrestling wise and wrestling terms to everyday situations. You always got to know your next move. What are you going to do? Well, if you don't really know, you can always listen. Somebody's going to tell you. Right. 
Yep, that's a good philosophy to have. So while you were wrestling, um, what? How exactly did the culture of independent wrestling, you know, sort of treat you as as you evolved as a wrestler and as a champion? Um, I was always told that I was before my time. Hmm. Because I wasn't the, you know, the the figure girl that WWE had in mind at that time. There was a mold that you needed to fit into and everybody looked the same or did this or did that. And I didn't, it, it was really irritating because I wasn't the thinnest girl. I did have muscles, but I didn't have some junk in the trunk. But Mm -hmm. it was a, okay, well, you need to lose this amount of weight. All right. So I'd go lose this amount of weight. Come back. Um, Your hair needs to be all one color. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go back. Fix my hair. I've lost the weight. I've changed the hair. No, we need your, we have to have your nails like this. You have to have, your outfit can't do this. And I'm like, this is just getting to be too much. But I wanted it so bad every time I was told to do something I would I would do it right but now it's like it's time for women to shine and I was the I was the one who was trying to be the one that was not like everybody else I didn't want to be the little Barbie doll girl I had multicolor hair I was just different Mm -hmm. I think it it helped in some ways being champion of different companies and maybe help get them noticed different places but when it came to hey we're gonna put you on tv we need you to look like this you gotta have this you gotta have and now if 10 years ago Veronica would have walked into anywhere they were like oh my god yes we need you right but I get how times have changed and thank God they have changed because I would hate for every single female that's out there now to be the same. It's just boring. And this was also at a time where women were maybe mid card, five minute matches. Oh, there's a divas match. So it'll be about six minutes with entrance and exit. So you probably get two minutes worth of actual wrestling. Mm-hmm. And that sucked because I was not that wrestler. I wanted to work. I liked entertaining. And now it's exactly what I always wanted it to be. So what better time now? I mean, obviously I'm done with wrestling, but it's just be it's, it just blows my mind that I'm able to still be involved at a capacity where I'm not in the ring, but yet I'm still have my hands on a few things and maybe I can help those other females who can take everything that I wanted to do 10 years ago and use it now because it, it works now. I mean, that, you know, that's, that, that's where it comes in of almost always before my time, which sucks, but it's finally, finally changed. Yes, definitely. I can only imagine, you know, how hard that must have been to know that you were, you knew you were offering something different, but not everyone was open to that or perceptive to that at that time. Um, and then seeing how it's evolved now and then, and then also with, with you being retired, I did want to ask, you know, if there's any, if, if there was any opponent that you, that you loved to face before you retired. And if there was any opponent that you would like to face now, if you weren't retired. That's a very easy question for me to answer. And it's Mm -hmm. actually the same, it's the same person. And when she found out that I was retiring, like it was done, it was officially done. I was not coming back. She actually sent me a text message and said, uh, no, we did (laughs) not get our final match and we will still have our final match. And I'm like, girl, we, uh, uh, I'll be happy to just come watch you. Cause it's, um, 
it's Sue Young. We mm -hmm. had the best time traveling. 2000, the end of 2008, all through 2009 and 10, we traveled all over the continental U.S. Do, mm -hmm. I mean, it was like we were Peggy and Bambi Lee, or bleh, Bambi and Peggy Lee traveling because that's what we did. We were Thursday through Sunday. We were always on the road and we were always together. So it was, it was so much fun. I mean, there were times that we didn't, some, sometimes we did not go somewhere together. Like we would meet there. And I remember being at one event where I did not see her before the show. I just knew when our match was and the locker rooms were not where we could conjoin or anything. I just knew we were having a match. Mm -hmm. I, me, I, I see her as I'm getting in the ring and that's the first time I see her and we wrestled so much together that we knew what was going to be coming next and it, it made it fun it was just so much fun and when I finally got the opportunity to get signed she was she was there a year before me mm -hmm. and I just loved the, the messages that I would get from her oh my god just hurry up and get here I don't know how much more I can take and by the time I actually got there or got the contract I didn't go my husband's uh, family has a business um, here in Alabama that has been in the family for 60 years and they offered my husband to come work for the business, work for the family and take over the business when um, his parents retired. And it was the same week that I got the rest of my life pretty much planned out for me, at least for the next five years. So it was either go back, it was going to FCW to make $25,000 a year or inherit a multi-million dollar company that Whoa. down the road would, you know, benefit and I would be able to not have to um, have all kinds of broken bones or injuries and stuff of that nature. So, I mean, it was the same exact week in 2011 and he said we're going back to Tampa there's no doubt in my mind we're I'm telling my parents no I said um no I have gotten my dream this is what I wanted to do just because I'm not the the diva that you would see on TV I think the best thing to do is to take up your parents offer and it's gonna work out in the long run and he didn't believe that I would say anything of that nature because I was the the it was in July of uh, 2011 because the rest of my year had already been planned out I was I was going to um, Smackdown in like uh, St. Louis or something for it all to be official and I was I was all in of course, my dream was coming true, but at the same time, it was, this is his dream. I've gotten my dream. I achieved it, but yours is a bit more important. So we took the offer of the family business over the WWE contract. So it was great. I did work for them a few times later, just little one-offs, and it was great to see all the people that I'd come up with because... Um, the Usos did a lot of their training um, where I was training and mm -hmm. they actually um, they're my age and they played football at, at a, I want to say it was a college in um, North Alabama with some guys that I went to high school with so it was fun to see all of them and go over stories that we hadn't reminisced about so it was the best, it was the best thing to do in our situation, but I would, um, definitely be with Sue. I would, I could probably get in the ring with her today and it would just be like riding a bike. Sue Young, I love you. I'm going to have to text <laughs> you. I'm going to have to text you now. 
<laughs> That's amazing. Maybe one day the both of you will fight kind of like the same way Rocky and Apollo fought, but nobody knew. <laughs> Like, that's what I imagined in my yeah. head. I, as you were describing it, I was like, well, maybe they'll fight again and have that last match, but it just won't be out in public. It'll just be like the same way Rocky and Apollo fought at the end of Rocky 3. Like, yeah, she, she's going to make sure it happens. I'm like, you do understand, like, I'm I'm old. And she was a lot younger than me, too. So it was it's fun. I got two kids. They're six and eight. And they love her. They like watching her character, especially now that she's all crazy or not crazy. It's just fun to see all the people that I kind of sort of came up with, but was way older than them in the limelight now and tell my kids, oh, that's mommy's friend. Oh, mommy did this and this and this and mommy and this person did. I mean, it's just, it's cool. I love her. That's got to be amazing. And it seems like, you know, you have a lot of peace in that decision that you did make about, you know, leaving wrestling. Because a lot of people, a lot of people, when they retire from wrestling, it's like they retire and then they'll be gone for like maybe a year or two. But then they pop back up. (laughs) Or like they're just like, I can't give it up because they love (laughs) it so much. But it seems like, you know, you really do have peace about it. Well, in 2011, when I did make, we did make that decision. It, it it was it was the best decision and I mean you're getting in there and you're doing a contract and you're saying you're not gonna have kids or this and I was prepared well <laughs> I actually my son was born 2012 <laughs> like a year <laughs> later to the day uh, it was the same it was crazy because it was the same week all of that stuff happened for us was the week he was born. It was the 4th of July week. He was due on the 4th of July. He just came two days late. But I was like, okay, my kid's never going to know that I was a wrestler. I don't want him to know that life. Yeah. When he was about two years old, he was, he he had already turned two and I'd had um, our second child, which is our daughter. Um, Smackdown came through Birmingham and my brother Joshua O'Hagan I don't know if you've heard of that little nerd but (laughs) he goes we need we need to take we need to take cash that's my um son to um Smackdown I said um I don't know about that he does like wrestling but he does not know mommy um mommy did wrestling he goes well he needs to know and I'm like fine let's just take him but leave mommy out of it well, of course, Road Dog hooked us up with some tickets. Oh, wow. And the tickets that we got were front row behind the announcers. And at the time, one of the Usos was out with an injury, so the other brother was there doing commentary. Mm-hmm. And so was Jerry Lawler. Of course, we're sitting right behind them, and they see us, and they're like, what are y'all doing here? This is crazy. They didn't know I had a kid. And so it was just really sweet to see. And then there's um, Daniel, who is a um, a WWE referee. He gets out of the ring um, after one of his matches. They go to, like, I guess, a commercial break. He runs over to me and Josh and goes, oh, my gosh, y'all have to wait for me after the show. Like, okay, (laughs) well, it, it was just, it was really fun. Cash, he was he had just turned two, so he had no idea how cool it was for him to meet all of these people at, you know, two years old. Well, shortly after that, so that was 2014, Josh is like, hey, why don't you just come back and do some interviews for um, a company at the time called GCW? And um, I said, um. Uh, I don't know, Josh. He goes, come on, it'll be fun. Just be in the locker room. Just do the interviews for the um, the TV show. I said, fine. So the end of 2015, I'm back at a show strictly to do maybe some color commentary and some pre and post match interviews. Well, it was probably February, maybe March of 2016 when they had talked me back into wrestling Mm -hmm. and I was like I said I was never going to do this and at at this time 
my son is full blown into wrestling and my daughter thinks it's cool that mommy goes and does this kind of stuff. So I'm like, what is happening? Why? I said I would never let my kids know this. Well, one thing led to another and then I'm back in the ring. I'm traveling all over the place again. And then, um, a few people had told WWE that I was back. So that's when I started doing a couple one-offs and my kid, he's so into John Cena and AJ Styles. I mean, you know, the typical kid thing Mm -hmm. right away. I mean, when me and Josh would take him, when they would just come through his favorite, his, his first favorite was John Cena, but he never wanted to dress up like John Cena. The first favorite that he dressed up like when he went to SmackDown or Raw was Xavier Woods. Let me oh. tell you, it was so exciting because I found a mini Francesca. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. It was incredible. And then he, he, he had a, a major Dean Ambrose love. So when he got to meet all these guys, it was just so cool for him to be at that age five years old getting to meet like major WWE superstars and he's just like hey (laughs) hi and John Cena tried to give him knuckles oh my goodness he rejected John Cena's knuckles I have never seen a child not just go crazy when they see John Cena. He literally held out his arm. He's like, dude, Knuckles. And he's like, Cash just shook his head no. Well, oh. it was the best part was Randy Orton had never seen a kid deny John Cena either. And so John Cena, is, he makes, tries to be funny and make a scene where, oh my gosh, he's not going to give me this. And Cash is laughing at him like, ha ha. Randy comes up and sticks out his hand to give cash five cash gives randy orton five he goes oh my god this is the coolest kid ever i want my picture made with him (laughs) and so cash he's five years old he doesn't know all this but what's so great about it is i remember being five years old and my dad taking me back and my favorite wrestler when i was five was sting Mm -hmm. I wanted to meet Sting. Now, this is Sting with blonde hair, you know, the spiky hair. Oh, yes. Sting. And he was a snack then. Yes. So, (laughs) I mean. (laughs) But yeah, I'm sorry. (laughs) He was it it in the 80s, you know. That was was just what it was. And my dad wanted... my dad took me backstage and I got to meet him when we were walking out and he wanted to give me five. He started signing something and I said to my dad, dad, that's not Sting. And the, he's and Sting laughs and my dad said, yes, baby, it, it is, it is. And I said, no, it's not. I didn't know it was Sting because I'd never, I never ever saw Sting without his paint on. <laughs> oh. So it was a fun memory to know that my kid at five got to meet all of his cool favorite people. And I remember being five and going back and meeting all of the cool people. Like when du- it was WCW that right. came through. And my dad, I think my dad um, was doing some referee stuff for them when they were coming through. So I got to go back and say, you know, meet some people, but it was really cool. So, yeah. That's amazing. And you know, it's it's so funny because I didn't start meeting wrestlers until I got like in my 20s. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, but when it happens, it happens. And the little kid in you, it's still, it's still very much excited. So, yeah. I can't even sit here away. and pretend like that, like it's still <laughs> not cool. I can't. Like, I almost passed out when I met Charlotte Flair. Like, <laughs> like I saw her head through the window and I was like, ah. <laughs> was, um, was she taller than you expected her to be? Actually, no. Like, really? She was, yeah. Well, see, she, I'm short. I guess so I'm like, man, she is as tall as she looks on TV. Dang. Yeah, not to me. I guess because I'm five six, and she was like, she was maybe about maybe five nine. She looks way taller on television than she did in real life to me. <laughs> well, um, me and me and Natty are the same height. Oh so, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I want to. That's be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, I want to ask you, um, 
how do you feel well you kind of alluded to it a little bit you know earlier but how exactly do you feel about the state of women's wrestling now and what do you think and where do you think it could possibly go and this this can translate towards the indies and mainstream wrestling as well in terms of the women oh man once the revolution i guess started and it was okay for women to be a different size or a different color or wear their hair different ways it was just amazing to see that's what i was envisioning 10 years ago that's what i wanted women's wrestling to be and i guess being before my time now is the time which is the reason for the Belladonna division. It's all women, not just your Barbie doll picture, the people that we can put on the posters, because that's not real women. I mean, Mm -hmm. yes, those women are real, but in reality, there's only a handful of girls that actually look like Barbie. Right. So, and I'm not one of those girls. Look, I'm serious. Uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot wrote a song about me. So why would I want to fit in that mold? Me too. <laughs> so it's, it's amazing to see that it's finally, I mean, everything seems to be so far behind in times, but it's finally here. Whether you're the skinniest little girl, you are the fattest girl, but you, you, you have the same love you get to wrestle if that's that's your job and that's what you know and that's what you love it's so easy to be able to if you know what you're doing you can be in the business where i i wasn't able to do that and i i don't i don't want any I I don't want to it sound to sound like that I had to do so much more to be a female wrestler back in these days but yeah I did but now I mean I couldn't imagine how awesome it is to be out there and to be you and not have to worry about do I need to lose weight should I've not ate that last night that kind of situation it is just girls time to shine no matter the size, your height, your color, what your character may be, it doesn't matter because I am woman. Hear me roar. We're going to roar and we're going to be loud. I mean, girls, you can main event WrestleMania now. So, I mean, what's, what's next for women's wrestling? Hey, there's this thing called the Belladonna Division. We're having our first show. Let me tell you about it. It's all women from the front to the back from the side to side i'm serious people it's like whoa the people that are at the front girls people that are running production girls people that are running the cameras girls every single wrestling match girls promoters girls it's our time to shine so we are trying something that i wanted to do 10 years ago where it's all females. I know it's kind of tried to been done a little bit, but there were still males running production or booking talent or running cameras and editing and all of this and that. But no, commentary, girls, ringside, everything, girls, 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 it's all women. We are there to run the show, make it the best that it can possibly be or better and come out of the on top of the wrestling business from indies to professional i mean i feel like we're all professional but you Mm -hmm. just have to get out there you have to step you have to have somebody that's willing to step up and step out of their comfort zone to be able to do something of this status i guess and that's what we're hoping for with the belladonna division because it's it's time that any, women can do anything, obviously, but it's our time to prove that we can. Well, that definitely, you know, speaks like to the passion, you know, for women's wrestling and where it could possibly go and how the Belladonna division can, you know, contribute to the future of women's wrestling. And I can say as a woman, 
um, in the South who's born and raised here in Birmingham, I am definitely so proud to be a part of this, you know, in some small, small way, shape or form. <laughs> um, even if, even as a commentary, as, as a person who's doing commentary for the very first time and using my voice, you know, in that way, like to elevate women's wrestling, like it just means the world to me to be a part of it. So it's exciting. We're, we're excited really to is. have you there too. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm ex- I'm excited to be there. Like <laughs> you have no idea. Like I'm really pumped because I've just been loving wrestling my whole life, and then to be able to use the voice, use my voice for this platform for my podcast, and then to do something like this, you know, that is all that is an all female event, like Evolution, and you know, so many other yeah. um, events and stuff like that. That's been all women. It means the world to me. So. To be able to, so I'm just really excited to be a part of it, like Saturday. So, what matches are you looking forward to seeing? Oh, oh my gosh! Well, you know, the card is subject to change, so we yes. never know what surprises we may have up our sleeve. Yes. Um, but man, jeez, oh, I can't tell you about the main event. So. I mean, that's perfectly fine. Oh, <laughs> it's supposed to be a surprise. I'm really looking forward to seeing Jazz. I have not seen her in a hot minute. Um, I want to say our last gathering was about probably 2011, um, where we did like an all girl show, but it wasn't like an all girl show that we're doing as the Belladonna like all women there were men that were involved but it it was all girls that worked on the show as in wrestled um I'm really excited about seeing her because everything she touches gold it's Mm -hmm. just perfect (sighs) anyways um (laughs) but there's there's so many I mean gee whiz just one would be hard to no, I mean, <laughs> we, um, me and Casey talked about some things, some matches that are happening, and she is really, really interested in watching, as in being out in the crowd for Shalandra's match. Mm-hmm. Shalance, I mean, I've, I've, we've had our differences in the past, but Sister can sing. And from what Casey has said about this match, it might be the one that I, I told Casey, I was like, are, do we have any front row tickets left? Cause I might have to buy one <laughs> for this match because it's something it's, it's just dynamite in both women. They've never worked each other before and they're not, if they've, I mean, gee whiz. It's just going to be something that's going to be explosive. And that's just something that you don't want to miss, you know? I mean, I'm sure every single match is going to be off the charts with excitement. But at the same time, it's like, God, I don't want to miss anything. Right. But I'm also a promoter and an owner. So I have to put out fires left and right with people. Dang. (laughs) Yeah. I might have, oh, this sucks. I'm going to have to miss this. So, thank God it's being filmed. (laughs) So, I can go back and go, yes, that's awesome. Just in case. (laughs) Right. Like, at least it's being filmed. So, you can go back and look and, and, you know, enjoy it in a way in which you kind of can't because you're running, you're running the ship. So, (laughs) I'm going to be running around with my... I'm going to have very, very bad hair day that day, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out my hair situation now as we speak. So I'm probably going to have to wear a ponytail just so I won't pull it out. <laughs> yeah, but I have faith. I have faith in you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. I have faith in everyone, you know, as, as a part of the show. Like, I have, I have faith in everyone. It's going to be yes. fantastic. I'm excited. Almost mm-hmm. can't sleep excited. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> but it's almost have... here. <laughs> yeah, it is. So as 
a wrestler, um, as a retired wrestler from Alabama, how much do you want wrestling to grow here in the state? Because I know, oh, girl, because I know <laughs> I'm since, even though I'm a wrestling fan, I really didn't know that we had that much. We, I didn't know we had an independent scene here until maybe a couple yeah. of years ago. So <laughs> this is just all like discovering a whole new world. Um, oh yeah, there, so there, how much there's a lot. I would like for there to be more people to enjoy wrestling again Mm -hmm. as in I I want people to know about independent wrestling not not compare it to the production of WWE right I want them to understand that this is this is oh I don't want to go watch that fake stuff child the amount of things that happened in my matches that were not fake. I mean, we punch each other. We take the falls. The bumps are real. Every move that we take is real. I hate mm-hmm. when people talk about the fakeness. Oh, that's the fake stuff. I'm like, mm, mm, Yeah, I hate mm, it too. Mm. And my husband who has been to every match that he could possibly be at with me and when because I don't I don't tell my personal life to everybody if they don't know that I was a wrestler in a previous career I do not let that just slip out randomly but when and if they're like oh my gosh you wrestled I had no idea you were in the Alabama Wrestling Hall of Fame like oh here we go (laughs) is that but it's that fake stuff and my husband will will even quickly go no 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 don't say fake don't say fake so i would love for the independent scene to have more publicity i wish there were people that would instead of wasting their nights going to a bar or hey let's just go have dinner and a movie i mean i know 2020 kind of shut a lot of things down but I would love to see the I mean you're putting money back into your state you're giving jobs you know just go to an event I promise every single person every single time you're going to get your money's worth it is going to be entertaining and if it's not the if the wrestling is not entertaining to you the people around you will not fail you because there's all kinds of shapes and sizes personalities at every independent wrestling event and you never you never know which one is going to be sitting beside you, how loud they're going to scream or who they're going to be a fan of it's just it's exciting to see So I would love for people to actually start enjoying the entertainment instead of, oh, that's stupid. Oh, it drives me crazy. I would love it to grow so much, but it's just something that we have to have faith in and people like all the independent companies to continue to do, but you got to get the word out. So Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know how to, where to begin on letting everyone know I mean because there's so much there's a lot of wrestling in North Alabama for sure um like the Belladonna division is actually going to be out of Gadsden Alabama for a minute before we start traveling the world but um it's it's amazing I mean drive an hour you do that going to work right sitting in traffic just just take the time to enjoy i mean it's it's an art and it's a talent and it's like you go to all these football games and blah exactly. blah blah blah. Yes. you're paying how much money for one thing that happens same thing and you're just hoping for that one person win when you can go to an independent wrestling show and cheer for all the good guys or cheer for all the bad guys or just listen to the idiots around you and be entertained way more than going to a karaoke bar. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> it's so funny you said karaoke bar. That's like that's like one of my favorite things to do. I love karaoke. I, I love, love karaoke it. to death. But if if I had to choose between going to that or a wrestling show, like you get your money's worth at the wrestling, wrestling show. show, I would definitely <laughs> go to the wrestling show. Like seriously. Yep. So I really appreciate, you know, you actually saying that and speaking to that, you know, in in the case of the state of Alabama as a whole. And I'm also I also want to say congratulations on you being an Alabama Pro Wrestling Hall of Famer. That's amazing. Thank you. Like, yeah, it was, it was a major shock. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shock to you, really? Yes. I was like, whoa. That was what? fast. Uh, wait, <laughs> what? Whoa. Yeah, um, the only the second female in the in that Hall of Fame too. Oh, who's um, the first? Daphne. Oh, okay, Daphne. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, love her. Good friend. Loved learning everything I could possibly learn from her in the ring. It was just an honor to. I was there when she was inducted, but had no idea that I would be inducted that next year. It was crazy. Absolutely wow. crazy. I bet it was, but that's definitely a cool thing. And here's some more um, female inductees um, happening at some point. So my last question to you is this. What do you hope your legacy in wrestling, what does the future hold for you, ma'am? Hmm. I, I would like to leave women knowing that no matter who you are or where you are in the business, as in you've been a veteran for 15 years or you've been in the business this long or you're just starting out, no matter the ranking, you need to have respect for yourself and the business and the people who are in the business with you we're all going to have people that we don't like we can't get along with you won't work with i get it i've been there but still have the respect for the business to continue the business side of wrestling and only people who are in the business will understand that because at some point I'm sure something horrible or someone said something bad or somebody has wanted you to do something to get to a point where hey you need to do this if you want to get to this level of wrestling with me you know those that me too mo- uh, movement right that, I mean those things do not have to happen just show your self respect it might not be the timing that you want it to be on where how how fast you want to get there and that's fine I mean everything's going to play out just continue to show respect for yourself others in the business and the business itself and I forgot the other part of the question (laughs) yeah I was you know I was I just asked you um what does the future hold for you for me I I train I was I trained um, at an academy for a, about two years. I love teaching. I love it. I don't see myself being able to have anything to do with this school because I'm not anywhere near a school and I don't plan on moving anytime soon. I mean, with the Belladonna division, I still feel like I can definitely be involved with Casey there putting, she's so more in tune with the female wrestlers in the indie world right now Mm -hmm. that when she can put those people together, Oh, this will be a good match and they can figure out what they have. I can help them do things and put things together. But that's all. I, I, I would love to have some kind of training capacity, but eh, we'll see. Maybe. 
it's fun, but I, I, I like being behind the scenes. I don't have to be the person that's out there all the time being seen. I like putting out the fires like I plan to do a lot of this weekend and making it run, if that makes any kind of sense. No, it makes all the sense, actually. So, yeah. Well, um, Miss Veronica, I want to thank you so much. It's been an honor having you um, on my show. So um, if you could tell everyone where they could follow you on social media um, and just put yourself over, then that, that would be great. <laughs> oh, I'm the wrong person to do that. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that it's Veronica Fairchild on um, the Facebook and uh, Instagram. Those are the only two that I know of. So if anybody's sending you something else, it's not really me. Um, this weekend uh, is... May 15th, the Belladonna Division, the very first all-women's show is called Genesis, and it is going to be absolutely amazing. I would love for you to go ahead and get your tickets because we're going to be at capacity very soon. I would love to see each and every one of you there, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast, and I look forward to seeing you this weekend. Thank and you working so much. With you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Okay, so thank you for listening to this new episode of The Hardy Wrestling Podcast. And I definitely want to give a special thank you and a special shout out to all the girls from the Belladonna Division who came on my show within the past few weeks. That's Casey Dillon, Veronica Fairchild, both of the owners of the Belladonna Division, um, Brittany Blake, The Wode, Valentina Loca. Thank you guys so much for coming on my show ahead of Genesis this weekend, which is Saturday, as a matter of fact. So, if you're listening to this episode, you know, if you have the opportunity, please go to my Instagram, um, that's at Hardy Wrestling Podcast, and, and use the link in the bio to buy you a ticket to this show if you're in the Gaston, Alabama area, or even in Birmingham, you know. And if you want to see this show, please go out and support women's wrestling. Um, tickets are still on sale. Um, general admission is $15. Ringside seats is $20. So please come out and support women's wrestling here in the South. And as always, you can support um, the Hardy Wrestling Podcast, like I said, on Instagram at Hardy Wrestling Podcast, on Twitter at Hardy Wrestle Pod, and listen to me everywhere you get your podcasts. That's Anchor, Spotify, my YouTube channel, Hardy Wrestling Podcast, um, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, and anywhere else you can get them. So, um, my last two episodes for this season will be coming out next week and it's going to be really special and I'm going to announce um, that probably Sunday. Um, so please be on the lookout for what I have coming up next in the next two episodes. It's going to be really cool and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you've continuously enjoyed this season and what I've been able to bring um, to you guys. So um, in light of that, I hope you're being your best selves this week and I hope you are being the light of the world and just, you know, just channeling who you are and building tables and knocking down glass ceilings and doing whatever it is that you do well. So um, with that in mind, thank you for listening to the Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl, Stephanie Hardy. And until next time, bye y'all.